Today I wanted to do a video on this mask, it's the XM28E4, more commonly known as just the XM28, and it's one of those gas masks where every time it's in a video people keep going in the comments, wow that's a really cool mask, um, and they always want to know more about it. So I thought I'd do an updated video on just this mask and some of the history behind it. So, first we have to look at um, the M17 gas mask that America issued sort of in the 50s or 60s, whenever it was it went into service. And as you know from my channel, the M17 is a failure. Cheek filter masks in general are failures because it's a really stupid concept for a gas mask. With a standard gas mask of a side or bottom loading filter, when your filter expires you simply unscrew it, put a new filter on, re-screw it, you're, you know, you're gold. And the filters last quite a while as well. What the idea was, was they wanted to make a super lightweight, you know, convenient gas mask that would have filters built into the cheeks. But they didn't actually think at the time you couldn't replace the gas mask without taking them, uh, replace the filters in the gas mask without taking the mask off. So you ended up having these um, really bulky cheek masks that were heavy, uncomfortable. Um, you know, they had a couple of advantages over the M9, like they put a voice diaphragm on the M17. That's about as far as it goes. Uh, so you had, in, but the main issue is you had these really irritating filters. You had to, you know, take the mask off and cram in. That's not, you know, easy to do when you're not under stress. But if there was some sort of chemical attack, you wouldn't be able to, um, you know, get the filters in without dying. So, the mask design was a failure, but to add to that, it was actually really heavy and uncomfortable as well. Um, so they came up with two ideas. Um, the XM28 was the better one. The other one was they literally got an M17, uh, they made it out of silicone, so it was a bit more foldy and um, lighter weight. And apparently that cut the weight down to 1.1 kilos. So if you've had something that's, you know, a mask that's like a, the M17 was between about 1.5 and 2 kilos, uh, you know you've done something wrong. Uh, but the XM28, which was the other prototype designed to replace it, was um, about, I think this is about 0 0.4 or just under in kilos. So, you know, this is a really light weight mask in comparison. Um, and what you have to note as well is the M9 before the M17 was nowhere near 2 kilos of weight, that was probably less than a kilo. Um, so the XM28, the idea was to make a mask that was far more compact, um, like the M17 originally should have been, and it's made out of silicon, so it's more comfortable and it's lighter weight. So, I'll demonstrate this mask to you now, I'm going to have to undo the straps, I'm not sure. No, there we go. So. That's the XM28. I'm not going to breathe through it for very long because I don't know how good these filters are. It's actually really hard to take air in through these filters simply because of the fact that they're so old. But, yeah, it's lightweight. I've got a fairly good field of view, although the um, oral nasal cut blocks a massive amount of your view in this mask. But, yeah, the XM28. You can't complain about it like you can complain about the M17 at least, because this is at least lightweight and sort of comfortable to wear. I'd say the closest thing I can compare this to is actually wearing kind of the 3M masks, you know, like the ones for like particulate filtering or whatever else, not the full face ones, but the half face masks if you then just had, you know, like an upper bit to it as well. It's that kind of feeling of a lightweight thing, because 3M do do some silicone masks as well. Um, so this one was made by MSA, which you can hopefully see on the bottom if the camera focuses. And I think MSA is Mining Safety Appliances or something like that. They used to do, uh, they were like one of the first companies that made gas masks and respirators because they used to make mine safety equipment. Um, MSA does a lot of the US gas masks. So this one was made in 1969. Um, now there are a couple of problems with this mask. One of them being, notice it says, for use in riot. Um, control agents only. As far as I'm aware, the mask wasn't tough enough to stand up to proper blister agents and chemical weapons, and the filters issued with this I think are only particulate filters, so you couldn't have actually used this as a military gas mask unless they redesigned it, but you know, for what it is as a tear gas mask, yeah, it works really well. As I said, it's lightweight. The issue being, though, that it's cheek filter masks. This is a lot more compact than the M17, so you've compounded the problem that the cheek filters aren't going to last very long and need replacing. So, yeah, the XM28 is much better than the M17, I'll give it that. It folds up pretty, you know, flat. Um, I still have no way of getting it in, back into this bag properly it came in, because uh, it wasn't folded properly for the bag. If I was getting, because of the age, I don't really want to try and fold this mask up too much, even though it's designed to fold. Um, 
But yeah, it's an interesting mask. It's a really weird, unique design. As I've said many times, cheek filters were phased out on purpose because it was a really stupid idea. A side loading canister or a bottom loading canister is much faster to change and replace and lasts longer than having filters in the cheek. And by trying to take the filter off a cheek of the mask, they inadvertently made the masks more bulky like they did in the M17 because you had two like half size filters in each cheek. If you look at how big the PBF cheeks are on the Russian gas mask, you'll notice that you know on the PBF um, it's a really good example of a mask where the cheeks are bulky, even though I like the PBF as a mask, it's interesting. You know, the cheeks stick out about that much each side, so it's not, you know, really any different than having a 40mm canister that's been designed to be more compact on the side of the mask. So, there you go. The XM28 didn't really enter service properly. It did go into service a bit, um, but the M17 was still being used by American troops, even into the Gulf War and everything, and that's when they finally realised, oh, we need a mask that works properly. Um, and that's when... They came up with the M40, or XM40 originally, and an M40. And again, that's making a mask like everybody else designs a mask with, you put a side-loading canister on it, and it's, you know, good to go. So, yeah, this is the weird bit of history where America um, must have dropped themselves on the head and decided cheek filters were a good idea for masks. But the XM28 is one of the few cheek filter masks I like, just because it's kind of unique and interesting, and at least ticked most of the boxes they wanted from the M17 originally being lightweight, you know, and comfortable, unlike the M17. Because that's the thing that really gets me with the M17, is they had the M9, which is a perfectly good mask, and rather than improving upon the M9, which other countries of nowhere near the amount of money America has did when they bought them, uh, America decides to make a mask that it's meant to tick all these boxes, and it basically ticks none of those boxes, and is worse in every way. Other than you could say, I guess, the rubber might have been a bit better than the M9, and, you know, it had a voice diaphragm on it, but for the most part, um, M17s are a total failure of a mask, just because cheek filters are a really stupid design, I can't stress that enough. I get a lot of people in the comments actually saying, oh, cheek filters aren't that bad, you're just being harsh on them in hindsight. No, they're just awful. Because you have to think that before cheek filters, people were making 60mm side-loading masks. You know, if they'd have just carried on developing that, we'd have had 40mm, you know, like, lightweight side-load masks prior to that. What would be cool is if somebody made, um, there probably are ones, uh, like masks like this, but with side-loading filters. The interesting thing about the XM28, before I forget as well, it's a complicated name, so I'm not going to remember it. But America, in the early Cold War, and I think they might have done the prototypes by World War II, had done these masks that looked like the grasshopper masks, the XM28, but rather than having cheek filters, it had a, like a filter that was wrapped around there. You can find pictures of it online. It's a, it's a bit like the British um, C7 mask. It was one they decided was too expensive to give to the populace, but they actually did design a prototype. So you can find pictures and videos online of this kind of mask that's like this, but I guess was the inspiration for this. I guess maybe if MSA made that other mask, they then said, let's just take that design, make it out of silicon, and um, you know put cheek filters in it. So yeah, to sum up the video, the XM28, yeah, it's a cool mask. Uh, I like it, but it's still a cheek filter mask. But yes, it was better than the M17, as in it could do the job the M17 was meant to do and failed at. But, of course, it did deserve to be replaced, and the M17 deserved to be replaced by proper 40mm masks. 